Welcome to Net Zero. After more than two weeks of UN climate negotiations at COP27, a final agreement was reached. The deal includes a historic provision to set up a fund to support developing countries that are particularly vulnerable to the adverse impacts of climate change. How hopeful can we be about the world's collective progress towards net zero? And what are some of the main challenges we still face? Omnia El Omrani was the first official youth envoy for COP27. It is my pleasure to interview her today about her takeaways from the conference. My first question for you is, following the COP27 summit, how hopeful are you about our collective progress towards net zero? And what do you think are some of the main challenges we still face? First of all, uh, thank you so much for having me. And uh, in terms of uh, being hopeful, I am always hopeful uh, because working especially with young people for over seven years um, really gave me the, the strength and the optimism that we are able to really push our nations not to backtrack on their promises. And this is what we have seen, for example, in COP27. For over 20 years, uh, many young climate activists as well as civil society, we're really pushing for the loss and damage agenda. And for the first time in history in Egypt, it has been not just adopted as an agenda point, but a loss and damage fund was developed. The challenges are how can we really meaningfully and effectively reduce our carbon emissions by 2050 to net zero? Not only do we need to pay for the loss and damage, we need to protect ourselves and build resilience and adapt to the change of effects of climate change. And all of this means that we need the climate finance to both equally work for mitigation, for adaptation, as well as uh, loss and damage. I really like the point about being inspired by working with the youth. So my next question is, as a youth leader, how can we make conferences like COP27 more accessible to the younger generation? And how do we disseminate the information that COP27 and conferences like that generates and inspire active participation? That's a great question because uh, COP is and other conferences are such a complex multilateral process that many young people see that it's very slow. Negotiations are not going as urgently as it needs to be. During COP27, for the first time, we work together with the presidency and the youth constituency to really integrate in the outcome decision of COP27 the mention of children and young people. And the way that we were mentioned is that we need to have young people integrated in the national country delegations. But we also created for the first time at COP27, the youth-led climate dialogue. We had two roundtable discussions where we brought in the negotiators, the chairs of the country groups, including the chair of G77 in China, the chair of EOSIS, the small state islands, as well as ministers coming together with the young climate experts and discussing adaptation, mitigation, and loss and damage. We mandated the next presidency to develop this dialogue so that we really push for the narrative of how young people are seen, not just as participants, but as partners engaging in how the negotiations are being designed and how we can bridge the implementation gap because we bring in these policies to our local communities to be implemented on the national level. Speaking of uh, roles of uh, countries, what role does Egypt play in the global climate agenda, both environmentally and collaboratively? In Egypt, we were very um, honored to be the hosts for COP because we have been leading the efforts, especially around adaptation um, in our region in Africa. And really, we wanted to bring in the voices of the frontline communities at the heart of the negotiation process to bring in climate justice, both intergenerational as well as uh, the voices of the most impacted. Because it's important to look at the agriculture aspects of climate change and how we can really ensure food security in terms of crop security. Last year, we had a mitigation goal that was very ambitious. We were working on how to achieve this goal, but we also wanted to do the same for adaptation. How important and recognizable has the activism of Allah Abdel Fateh have been uh, among the public in Egypt and also specifically among the youth? That's important because we recognize as young people in Egypt and globally the importance of human rights as well as climate justice. At COP27, it was a safe space to talk about all these different issues, uh, both that affect young people in Egypt and globally, and we were able to uh, do that at COP. That's all the questions I had for you.
do you have anything more to add for our net zero audience i think it's very important as we look now to cop 28 and it's so exciting that we also have a youth climate envoy because our activism is so critical to really pushing forward these commitments it's not just about cop it's about what we can do with our communities it's important that human health especially the health of our generation generations to come is placed at the center of the climate negotiations um, and discussions. Thank you very much for your time and perspectives today, Omnia. Very truly enlightening. Uh, I'm Philo Magdalene. I add my voice to the voices of my Net Zero International Youth Peers to monitor the action of our world's leaders to achieve their Net Zero commitments. And together we can achieve Net Zero. Thank you.